Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today is a fun one because we are going to be freehand creating with embossing powder and this is just really, really fun and really simple, but I do want to create a gorgeous background to begin with. I'm going for pretty simple and so I've got a couple of stamp sets here because I wasn't sure at this point which one I wanted to use. I have my good old favorite. This is the Leaf Canopy from Altenew and I thought this was nice because it's leafy and that's sort of the theme but this one here is Quilted from Simon Says Stamp and I thought this one could also be good because it's just a gorgeous sort of all over geometric pattern. Now forever I have been on the hunt for the perfect grey ink. Now, I think this is pretty close to it. This is Twilight from Catherine Pooler. Now, one of the reasons that I love these inks is that they stamp beautifully. I would compare it to stamping with the Versafine Clear pigment inks. They give a beautiful, solid image. Now, I don't have the best of luck with stamping with dye inks. I haven't found one that I like. And honestly, I just don't get good results, so that puts me off. However... I'm always impressed with the Catherine Pooler ones. So the one thing to remember is that with this ink, you can do a second generation stamp and get a darker image as is the top, sort of full strength one at the top there, but stamp it again and you get a much lighter version. And the lighter version is what I am going for. So to me, this feels like a two for one ink um, sort of thing. So if I want a darker gray a darker light gray <laughs> then I just stamp it once and if I want a light light gray then I stamp it off first so that's what I'm doing I'm going to create the background here just with um, the two solid stamps from leaf canopy now I have so many videos in my stash that are made up using this leaf canopy stamp set it is an absolute favorite of mine I don't ever see myself getting rid of it I love this one so very much I probably could have gotten away with just using one of the stamps, however, it's a little bit of variation to use both of the sizes. So I'm just filling it in, making sure that it's sort of as random as I can make it. Then I'm going to use the background stamp. This is the quilted one from Simon Says Stamp. Now for this one, I wasn't sure just because there's not as much solid uh, image, you know, imagery in this one. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have the full strength grey ink or just the stamped off. So I'm going to do both and then we can find out which one we'd like to use. So I have my ink ready to go and I'm just making sure I have a scrap piece of paper because that way I won't get ink all over my hands. I have my card fronts ready to go, which are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm going to add the ink all over the stamp, just gently tapping all over. Now, of course, you will have stamps or anything in your stash that you can make this background with. Absolutely. Anything is going to work. It doesn't really have to be uh, something in particular. These are just a couple that I was trying out just to see how they would go. Now, at this point, I think some a child was telling me something, a story, because boy, I was inking that up for a long time. But I am going to put down my card front and then a scrap piece of paper just to make sure I get really good contact and pressure. And as usual, I get with uh, the Catherine Pooler inks, I get a really good image, clean and crisp and solid stamping. Now for this next one, because I couldn't guarantee where I where the kind of card front was, I'm actually just going to ink it up fully, then use my scrap paper to take one print and then put it down that way. Just because I couldn't exactly line up where it was, I couldn't see from the ink, so this way is fine. So this is the stamped off version uh, versus the full strength one on the left. So I'm not sure which one I want to use at the moment, but that's okay because we'll figure that out pretty soon. Now, from here, I actually got a few, a couple of new embossing powders the other day. I really am a boring person when it comes to my embossing powders. I pretty much have clear, white, and gold, and silver. And then that just means that I can stamp in any pigment ink, and I can kind of get any colored embossing powder that I need. However, I did discover that there were some of these really fun ones that have sort of you know, bigger chunks in them, they have glitter in them, they have all the gold in them, they have uh, all sorts. And so I did order a couple of these to have a play with. Now I'm going to do a sort of freehand design. So no stamps needed, no dies needed. I'm just going to shape these up. So the first shape I thought about doing was just a really big, gorgeous leaf kind of coming in on an angle. Now I'm using a little Kaiser Craft tool to do this. A paintbrush is going to work perfectly too. In fact, I do switch to that later on. 
So all I've done is just poured the embossing powder on and it's going to make this gorgeous big leaf. Now this came to me when I accidentally spilt <laughs> some of the embossing powder and I thought, hey, that looks like a big leaf. And so it's okay to do things a little bit freehand, but I'm going to change my plan here because I think I can aim for a little bit more. So I'm going to create a little bit like the leaf canopy stamp. Now I chose to go on this background here and I am going to sort of just pour a little, you know, a little dot of it out. I don't know how much it is. It's just enough. <laughs> and I am going to use my little tool here and a paintbrush to sort of shape this into a leaf, I guess. Now there are stamps out there that look similar to this and this is pretty much what I was trying to replicate. Uh, I had the leaf canopy one beside me as you saw before. So that's what I was kind of going off. I lift this up so that I can heat from underneath. If you heat from on top, then it's all going to blow away because obviously I have no embossing uh, ink or anything like that that is holding this in place. So I heat from underneath and it just gives this most gorgeous, this is a really gorgeous one. It's sort of blues and greens, but with white specks and black specks and gold uh, sort of mica powder or something. It gives it a gold tint. It is stunning. And I was absolutely loving using this. I used this on a project the other day and I just couldn't help myself in using it again. So as you can see, I manipulate this around with my paintbrush a whole lot. Now I do sometimes tap off my paintbrush to the side because it gets some of the glitter and things in it and then it sort of leaves it in places. I did discover that that just blows off anyway if the glitter is not set in the um, embossing powder, the plastic melting, then it, it just wipes off anyway. But you can see that I just form a leaf one at a time just so that I don't bump any others. And then this is stunning. I can't even capture on camera how gorgeous this embossing powder is. Here I decided to go for two at a time and I just grab a little scoop and then sort of shape it into a leaf. And then even once I've shaped it, I sort of discover that sometimes I might want it going in a different direction. This leaf sort of started going downhill and then I thought, actually, I sort of want it going uphill a little bit more. So that's okay. I end up mushing it and just changing it around to start it pointing uphill a little bit more. But it does remind me that things don't have to be perfect, that these are handmade cards, that I had a really enjoyable time and there were no stamps or dies involved in the leaf. It was just um, inspired by some other stamps, I guess. Because I'm not sure how this goes with the embossing ink. I'm not sure how... I think you would always have to heat from the bottom because I feel like these are such chunky pieces of embossing powder that it would blow away. Um, I don't think my ink is, is sticky enough for sure. But then my mind was racing with ideas once I started doing this and I was like, well, I guess maybe you could put it through a stencil and you could lift the stencil up and then heat and get that kind of pattern. I'm not sure. I was dying to try it, but I'm keeping these videos short. I like, prefer shorter videos. I try and make shorter videos. Um, and that also means that the editing process and the voiceovers and the uploading and all of that isn't too long for me to manage. Um, but I must admit my mind was absolutely racing. Now I have some Gur ink here. This is just a brown dye ink. It is water reactive. It happens to be from Simon Hurley. I also have some black soot. Uh, this, is, this is the Distress Oxide. But I'm going to mix these together a little bit to get a darker brown. And this is just going to be the stalk, the stem of the leaf. Now my painting skills are right next to zero. So I am just literally drawing lines to create and join all of these leaves together. Now at this point, I thought it looked a little bit sparse. It was a little bit, um, it needed a little bit more filling in. So I'm actually going to do some sort of mini leaves. Now that is exactly the same process. I just put down a little scoop and I'm going to try and do a couple at a time. And these are just going to be little ones. These ones I find don't have to be shaped so much. They really just sort of go down in a little blob and then it's pretty obvious, I think, what they are. <laughs> you can let me know if this looks uh, believable or not. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do the same process. I make sure that I lift this up and heat from the bottom. And then if you want to, you can heat from the top afterwards as well, uh, just to kind of finish it off. But I quite like that look and I like the look of these sort of organic edges I quite like that rather than it being perfectly neat for this so I was having a really good time now I've skipped forward added in a little bit more um, stalks and stems and then we are good to go we need to turn this into a card of course because this is sort of a gorgeous focal point and we've created the background but let's finish it off and make it into a card 
it's so hard to capture on camera just how stunning this embossing powder is when it's melted. There is so much going on, a lot of dimension, a lot of different speckles and colors. I absolutely love it, but really hard to capture on camera. Now I'm going to trim this down just a little bit so that this becomes a little front panel. Then I discovered that in a harvest uh, little paper pad here, I had a turquoisey sort of color that is really, really similar to the turquoisey used in the uh, embossing powder. So I'm going to take that, I'm adding some double-sided tape onto the back of my card front, and I'm going to pop that down onto my um, matting layer. Now I'm sure I could have found an ink that was somewhat similar, and I could have done it that way to add a border, as I often do. If, I don't, if you don't have paper pads or ink, then you could try and find an alcohol marker, and you could go around the edges with that to create a color, but this one just happened to match perfectly. I'm using my Tim Holtz 9.5 inch uh, long bladed scissors and just going around the edge that gives me the straightest cut that I can get. Then I want to add something a little bit more to this card. So you guys have seen this before. This is the some burlap twine, I guess, uh, burlap ribbon. And all I do is if I want to make this into twine, I just cut off one of the edges and that sort of releases all the individual strings. And then that way I can have twine without having to have sort of it separately stored. So I put a little piece of double-sided tape on the back here of each side. And then I'm just going to create a little... Um, it probably looks like it's been wound around the card several times, but because I had cut this, I'm just going to use all these pieces to create individual little bits that go across the card. This is going to help me uh, create another little focal point that I can put the sentiment in. It's also going to create a little bit more interest because this is a pretty simple background, but I had so much fun creating this one and my mind was going wild with ideas that we could try. So let me know if this is something that you would try. If you are inspired by this one, then come over to our Facebook group, which is called Come Crafting with Natasha. There is a link down below in the description box, or you can just search it on Facebook. And then show me your creations. You can upload pictures that I can see. I would love to see what you've created. Um, as per usual, I will have links in the description box down below, and I also have a link to the Buy Me A Coffee in case you would like to support my channel, which I appreciate so much. But finishing off this card, I have put this onto a card base, a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. I have a sentiment here that is from the Word Fragments uh, stamp set by Woodwear, and I have just stamped out some of these. I've stamped and embossed them with some clear embossing powder trimmed it down with the scissors and it's actually going to nestle perfectly in that little twine bed there. So this card was so fun to make. I had a ball doing this and I felt very free that I didn't have to follow a particular pattern and that things could kind of go where they wanted to. And I just think this is a really fun card to make. I think it could also be used for any occasion. I needed a thinking of you card, well actually a family member had asked for one so that's what I was creating today. But other than that, let me know what you think of this card and I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.